good morning our viewers uh, today we will uh, speak about uh, somalia the second part uh, unfortunately my comrade uh, uh, elias amara he is not available so i will be speaking alone on uh, somalia from 1960 until 1990 as everybody knows that it is Somalia got her independence in 1960, first the northern province from the British, and then the southern Somalia from the Italian colonialism. Both of them, they have merged and they have created the Somali Republic, and it existed from 1960 until 1969, when the change came and the military officers took the power. What happened since 1960 to 69? Somalia had drafted her constitution. It became member of uh, uh, most of international organization. It built its diplomatic relation with a lot of countries outside in Africa and Asia and in the world. The first challenge Somalia faced after the independence, it is how to build a national army. As we have mentioned in the last discussion we had, the national army to protect the nation, as they call it, they have tried to deal with the Italian, they went to Italy, Somali delegation, but Italy was not willing. Somalia doesn't need a national army. It needs a sort of uh, a, a gendarmerie or a police, a, a police. The same, the French also reacted in the same way, the British and United States. Finally, the Somali delegation ended up in Moscow, discussed with the Soviet authorities, and finally, the embryo of Somali army was established by the Soviet Union. This is one major factor. Inside Somalia, of course, uh, after they have drafted their constitution, they opted to go to multi-party democracy, and there was several elections in the country. At one stage, the political parties have reached to 69. When one reads about the situation of Somalia until 1969, you look and you read about Somalia in the Journal of Modern African Studies, there is a lot of articles are written on Somalia, and in the title called is Pastoral Democracy. It's true under the civilian government there was no any political prisoners, but there was a chaotic situation in the administration they could not decide Somali language which script will have. There was a debate for a very long time ago among the Somali linguists and Somali intellectuals of the different ideological groups who wanted a, a, a Somali language to have an script. Uh, a professor who used to teach in Somalia before as a young man now became a professor, maybe emeritus, uh, uh, in United States, Mr. David Latin, Dr. David Latin, Professor David Latin, in his uh, PhD studies and then later on became a book, Thought and Politics in Somali Society, is a wonderful research made on the debate of which script has to be a, 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 a selected or Somali language uh, in which script have to be written. Of course, most of the Somalis spoke Somali language as a mono nation, but it lacked a script, and because of lack of a script, it created also a chaotic situation after the independence in the bureaucracy. Sometimes some people who have studied in Arabic, they used to write in Arabic, and those who studied in Italy, they, Ital they write in Italian, those in English write in English, and with all other languages. And this have created a confusion and they have to establish a new department which only busy translating documents and memos from the different departments of 
the ministries and the departments and so on. So the communication was not swift. Secondly, is that this bureaucracy caused a lot. So because of lack of, of, of script, it, until documents are translated, everybody was grabbing the telephone and, and trying to solve the problems in a shortest period by using telephone. So the telephone bill also within the administration have increased heavily. So the debate continued and it was a democratic debate. I really advise everybody or anybody who wanted to read about that part and the problem of how to administer and how to create a coherent bureaucracy and administration. Professor David Latin's book is a very good indicator. The title of the book is called Thought Politics in Somali Society. I advise for anybody if they have a, a, a possibility to get this book or, and, and read about it, one can understand Somalia, what kind of difficulties is facing. Of course, in this debate, uh, uh, there are people who promoted that Arabic should be in the script for the Somali language because we are closer to the Arabs, we are Muslims, and uh, the Holy Quran is written in Arabic. So, therefore, Arabic should be the national script of Somalia. This is one group. The other group is something, a combination and of uh, a very unique alphabet called Osmania. The person himself is called Osman. He has developed also a script, and he wanted that this script to be the national script for Somali language. And he was debating in a way that, that it is the script must be authentic. We have to create it from inside. And of course, that script also was presented as another solution. The third important script is Latin. And uh, those who are advocating for Latin, they go very far that it is, we are not the first Muslim people to take Latin as uh, 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 a script for Somali language. There are also nations who didn't have a script and who have chosen Latin to be taken and to promote their own language. One of them is Indonesia. And in Indonesia, there was a lot of debate exactly like in Somalia. It took for almost seven decades. And finally, they have decided Indonesian language, which is vowel and consonant and all, it is fits for faster growth of the uh, Indonesian language and Indonesia. The best is that is Latin. And finally, they have decided Latin to be written. This is also implicated in the Philippines. As we know that Philippines also is a Malay people. There was also a lot of debate among themselves. And finally, they have taken also the script, Latin script as their national script. The second other country was also after 1923 and unification of Turkey and the collapse of the Ottoman Empire. There was a very big debate and the Ottoman alphabet, which is used which is Arabic originally, the alphabet, uh, uh, it was rejected and Turkey under Ataturk had adopted Latin. So those who are demanding Latin in Somalia, they are giving these two countries and they are saying that it is uh, Latin is the best. Secondly, is that the materials and the machines is av are available. We don't have to invent it and we have no the technological capacity to invent new machines. They give an example of the Sabian alphabet which was used by Ethiopia, but it, is, it couldn't grow and then it limits the growth of the language that it is a lot of people cannot participate writing their uh, 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 the, uh, the whatever, whether it is a romance or whether it is literature, whether it is history or politics, it will limit us. And we have no the possibility, we are not an industrial country to build a new machine and we have no other capacities. So Latin, it is an international, it can be used, it, it can be integrated into our a grammar system, into our vowel system and so on. So. so this debate continued until 1971, until the military took over the power in 1969, and then they have declared it Latin will be the Somali script. We will talk about it later on, 
Between 1960 and 1969, of course, as I have said in the beginning, that Somalia was chosen and, and, and uh, have uh, written their constitution as a multi-party uh, country. And this multi-party is there were about 69 political parties have reached until 1969. Uh, and, and it created also, in a way, some positive things. The debate was open. And uh, 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 but the administration could not function. The implementation of national projects because of uh, one is that the script problem, and it is all these uh, languages which was written in the bureaucracy had hindered it for a while. And secondly, is that the mushrooms of the political parties, political parties in a name, but basically a clan parties who have no a modern vision of political party. And it is more uh, uh, on the basis of individual and clans continue. We've had several elections in the country, and uh, uh, a peaceful transfer of power also happened in the country. Uh, uh, there was never been a, a, a political prisoner assault in the country. This is one of the positive side. The negative side, of course, uh, uh, as I have mentioned earlier, that it is, they could not rationalize the administration because of lack of script. And secondly, is the mushrooms of the political party on the sectarian basis, on a clan basis, and it could not bring uh, a cohesive national uh, project of nation building. And there was a lot of conf uh, confusion. Between 1960 and 69, the civilian government have taken several steps. And one of the steps is that to try to rebuild the Somali army, which they have succeeded to certain extent, the Somali army, the Somali police, and so on, and the bureaucracy. And they tried also to build the education system uh, 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 in the country. Of course, we have to understand the chaotic situation because the country didn't have a script. There is a chaotic situation in the bureaucracy and so on. So there were different schools, Arabic schools, English school, Sudan mission in Johar, and so on and so on. So it was very difficult also to organize education uh, in, in a sense of that organized curriculum for the nation in general, because it is some study in Italian, some in Arabic, some in English, and so on and so on. This also one of a problem for the country, despite that the country was peaceful, there was no uh, such uh, uh, conflict among the people, but to strengthen the, the, uh, the bureaucracy, to strengthen the vision of development, it was a little bit lacking behind because of the problem which earlier I have mentioned. And this government in 1960 until 1964, it continued. Uh, it had a pan-Somalist vision. Uh, uh, Pan-Somalist in a sense, as you see the, the flag, uh, uh, it indicates the five Somalis. Secondly, it claims that it is the Somalis not completely independent, except the British and the Italian Somali who had got independence, and then they joined together and created Somali Republic. But there are parts which are still under the uh, without their, uh, 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 without asking them and without giving a, uh, making a referendum what they want. So Somalia have rejected the colonial borders, even though there is no serious colonial borders demarcated as, as other areas. And uh, Somalia joined it when Africa got independent and, uh, uh, and, and BIP uh, independent and the Pan-Africanist movement are discussing on this issue. There were two groups within the continent who were divided. One is that it is the Monrovia group, which is led by the late comrade uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. The second group is that it is the Casablanca group, which Somalia and Morocco, they join. Both of them are, they say that the right of self-determination uh, uh, must be applied as it is, because the colonial borders have divided the people 
the same people into different states. Morocco was claiming Spanish Sahara, Morocco claiming Mauritania, because at one time Mauritanian President uh, uh, Mukhtar Uldada had been a minister of education in Morocco. And Somalia says that it is the colonial boundaries which exist. It is unfair, it's undemocratic. We don't accept it because it divided the Somali people into different states. And we wanted the right of self-determination of the Somalis, which they call the Western Somalis, which is, it is in the hand of Ethiopia the, and, and, and Kenya and Djibouti. Finally, it is, it is Kenya got, uh, uh, before Kenya getting independence in 1962, there was a referendum happened delayed by the late Prime Minister of Nigeria, Sir Abu Bakr Tafio Abalewa, and that referendum, about 87% of the population in the Northern Frontier District, what it's called, opted to join Somalia. But Kenya by that moment also in a revolutionary situation, fighting for independence for herself against the British. And then finally, that without implementing that, Kenya got independent in 1963. Few months later, there was a conflict and there was a rebellion in this uh, Somali speaking area in Kenya. And uh, uh, Kenya came in contradiction with Somalia. And in 1965, Ethiopia and Kenya have signed uh, 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 a pact to defend a, a pact that it is any attack on Kenya is attack on Ethiopia and the reverse is possible. At the same time, of course, uh, the diplomatic relationship between these states, between Somalia, Ethiopia, and Kenya, it was open. Somalia had an embassy in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia had an embassy also in Mogadishu, and Kenya the same. But the propaganda and the, the, the antagonism between these three states continued, at least verbally. By 1964, there was a conflict, a military conflict between Ethiopia and Somalia. It is uh, 1964, uh, and it was some uh, uh, military e e e e uh, clashes happened. In the Ethiopian side, is that the uh, Eritrean origin general uh, Aman Andom was leading that. He was responsible for the third division uh, of Ethiopian army, which is stationed in that area, and his main office is in Hara. Uh, and, uh, and the Somali side is the late president uh, 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 who died, uh, uh, Abdullah Yusuf. Uh, he was the one who was leading also uh, the combat from the Somali side. And finally, uh, in uh, Khartoum agreement, they have uh, signed uh, a peace accord. Uh, and then an election happened in Somalia in 1965. A new prime minister was elected. He's from the north, uh, uh, Mohammed Ibrahim Igal. Uh, and, and the president is elected, uh, President Shermarke, until 1969. Uh, the reason that it is 1969, after the killing of the president Shermarke by his bodyguard, the military forces led by General Mohammed Siadbare took the state power. And they uh, claimed that they are a, a, a revolutionary. They wanted to bring Somalia into a revolutionary democracy and so on. They wanted to fight corruption. They wanted to fight the embezzlement of public uh, 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 money and so on. And they took over the power in 1969. By 1969 until 1971, the military consolidated its power. It also allied with uh, progressive civilians who are, uh, 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 have uh, a left ideology. And that by that moment also that it is uh, the vision of uh, the uh, Soviet leader, uh, Anita Khrushchev, who was thinking that it is in the African continent, revolutionary officers in alliance with revolutionary intellectuals, they can be a vanguard to build a new society. That is the theory from the Soviet side. And the Soviet Union also is the first to have applauded and supported the military to took over the power. And it supported them also that these are revolutionaries. They want to transform the Somali society into what they consider 
a socialist uh, society. By 1971, the military regime decided that it is Latin will be the script. This is one of the major decisions in the Somali history. By doing that, uh, uh, first, they facilitated that uh, the, and the, the contradiction in, uh, uh, previously exist under the civilian government, that the bureaucracy, the other languages are burgeoned from the democracy, uh, the bureaucracy, and the bureaucracy was centralized, and the, the efficiency of the progressy because of Latin was used as a script for Somali language. It increases the communication and, 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 and also rationalizes the bureaucracy. Immediately after they decide that, uh, years later, they have to mobilize and teach analphabetization in Somalia. Uh, and they started a campaign, mobilized all university and secondary students to go to the rural areas to uh, uh, teach the, uh, uh, the peasant and semi-peasant and the nomads and the mobile nomads. They even created a mobile school which moved through with the the pastoralist people from one place to other place, and they have been successfully uh, 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 organized this campaign. And this campaign became successful, and it was even awarded by UNESCO. Uh, uh, and this is, and it increased the communication, the written communication between the people. Uh, it rationalized the bureaucracy. Uh, it, it, it created the awareness. It is used for health, used for uh, awareness of things. And secondly, is that it is majority of the people before they were, could not write and read in their own language. Now accessibility became possible and the campaign also helped to increase the awareness. And for that, uh, they were uh, uh, showered uh, uh, by success, and in a lot of uh, articles, you could see it in modern journal uh, uh, African Studies, they have uh, written a lot about it. This was the first uh, in the African continent which was organized in such a way uh, that it is Latin, could be easy access, you don't have to change the machine, the ma almost machines they are using Latin, and secondly, it was very easy and uh, uh, to, to understand it and to write it. The other forces who had the concept Arabic and Osmania and so on, in this decision, they were defeated. And now, of course, majority of the Somali people is writing in Latin. As I have mentioned earlier, that it is, there was because of, uh, uh, because of uh, lack of script, a lot of projects, a lot of projects uh, 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 could not be fulfilled, and it could not be integrated. Uh, could not be integrated uh, uh, in, 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 in the society. One is that the implementation and the writing of the project to develop it was used by foreign languages, which is except specialists and those who have studied. Uh, abroad, whether it is Italian or Arabic or English and so on, could understand and could draft these projects, uh, but it is, they could verbally communicate with, with, uh, on the ground, but they could not translate it and could not make it easier accessible for the ordinary people. And because of this, that it is, there was a gap between the state and the state bureaucracy and the majority of the population. That gap was reduced once they have decided in 1971 to use Latin. And then after that, organizing all the students uh, uh, from university and secondary school, sending them to the rural areas to educate and to make a campaign of alphabet alphabetization. And they have succeeded. And that considered it was one of, and I consider it was one of the major projects of the military regime had succeeded. Uh, after that, the, as I have mentioned, the view of uh, uh, the Soviet Union, and particularly the view of the former leader of the Soviet Union, Anita Khrushchev, 
who believed that it is revolutionary intelligentsia with revolutionary officers, they can be a vanguard, and both of them, they can merge, and they can create a political party, a socialist party, and this is what happened in Somalia also. Gradually, the socialist party was created, and later on, the party was drafted, and in 1974, they have declared that Somalia is a socialist country, which they call uh, scientific socialism, and the country will be led. They adapted the constitution, they rewrote the constitution again. Somalia will build a scientific socialism in Somalia, and the vanguard will be the socialist party. And it continued until 1990, until the demise of the uh, the Socialist Party and uh, uh, President Isaias, uh, the President Syed uh, Barre uh, uh, leaving the palace in January 1990. Uh, uh, and then uh, uh, in the first uh, interview we did about Somalia, uh, we have explained what happened uh, from 1990 until recently what is going on in Somalia. Uh, by 1972-74, Somalia had a very strong relationship with the Warsaw Pact, with the Eastern Socialist countries, and with a lot of uh, socialist-oriented uh, uh, countries and revolutionary countries. And Somalia became one of uh, 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 important country in a sense uh, because of the Cold War, uh, 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 in one side, American supported regime. On the other side, the Soviet uh, supported regime uh, who considered themselves as a revolutionary. And Somalia became a bastion of this. And uh, to indicate one of it is that uh, by 1970s, the Somali government had supported the revolutionary movement in Angola, and it decided that it is the MPLA will be the vanguard in, in Angola against UNITA, and the beginning of UNITA was also, also supported. The uh, Prelimo, all Portuguese colonies, uh, was supported. By 1975 or 74, the first uh, OAU meeting, head of state meeting in Mogadishu, Somalia lobbied heavily, and it became a vanguard by uh, supporting and making sure that the African continent and the OEU recognize as a vanguard uh, uh, Prelimo and MPLA. They are the, the sole representative of the Angolan, the sole representative of the Mozambique people. And on that uh, meeting, it was... Uh, a very interesting meeting happened in Mogadishu, and it was the first OAU meeting. Uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Somalia at that moment, Minister Omar Arte Khalid, he also tried to be the Secretary General of uh, 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 the African Union. It took three days to elect. Finally, he could not win because the balance of forces, it divided Africa into two, the pro-West and pro East and uh, uh, the vote was not sufficient for him. He could not get an absolute majority. And then finally, the former Secretary General to continue. So the division, the ideological division was very, very strong. Of course, uh, uh, Somalia's foreign policy, when we analyze Somalian foreign policy, as far as the Eritrean issue, that Eritrea is an Italian colony and it was wrongly have been and, and treated, and the Eritrean people must have the right of self-determination as anybody, as any country or any colonial uh, entities who had a chance to get uh, independent. Eritrea must get its own right of self-determination. This position is not only of the military regime, later on which came in 1969, but also the civilian government. That is why is that the Eritrean Liberation Front had from the 60s office in Mogadishu. And this also brings apart 
uh, from what they call Western Somali, which is the Somali is in Ethiopia uh, uh, issue, but also the Eritrean issue, in a sense, it had brought the relationship between Ethiopia and uh, 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 Somalia. It was very difficult. It was a not, not good relationship. In fact, both nationalism, they were in competition, and uh, it was a, a very difficult time for both states and both, both people in the region. Uh, what happened after that? That Somalia was consolidating under socialist regime, as they call it. It have realized a lot of projects. Uh, it solidified the Somali nationalism. And it continued until 1975. By 1975, a huge delegation led by President Ziad Bari visited Moscow. They have signed a common pact with the Soviet Union. By that moment, there was a lot of row and a lot of noise in United States and Europe that Somalia had allowed the Soviet fleet to have a military base in Somalia and particularly Berbera. So the, this is on the time of the Cold War at the highest level. Uh, this is uh, uh, the Somali situation and Somalia was really going on the line like Southern Yemen and all other forces who are anti-imperialist countries and it joined in that it have a very strong relationship with Cuba, with Eastern Europe and so and so on. And it became a bastion of a revolutionary state in the Horn of Africa. Gradually, a situation changes and the environment is changed in the Horn of Africa. The situation in Ethiopia, the feudal states of uh, uh, Emperor Haile Selassie uh, crumbled through its own contradiction. In one side is the Eritrean Revolution, on the other side is the famine which happened in 1973 in the northern provinces, the peasant issue, all the contradiction which had existed in Ethiopia, the revolutionary movement emerging in Ethiopia, the student movement, and so on, the embryo trade union, which is uh, the embryo working class was emerging because of the inter introduction of capitalism gradually in the environment of Addis Ababa and so on. This brought the demise of the regime and the military took over. The, exactly what happened, uh, directly it's, it's like in Somalia. The military officers took over and it took these officers, of course, there were two types. There were the upper aristocratic uh, officers and then you have the junior officers who came a little bit from the ordinary people, or we could say from the oppressed people, which he says that Mangistu Haile Mariam represented that. And civilian political, those who had been outside the Ethiopian student movement from 1969 on, it developed gradually in Europe and United States. And out of these two political parties have came out, uh, the, they came out. One is the old Socialist Party of Ethiopia, the other one is the EPRT, and this one gradually came back to the country. This we will talk about it next time when we speak about the, uh, the political history, modern political history of Ethiopia. So the military regime, it and some of uh, the same ideology of Nikita Khrushchev, it is applied also on the other side and uh, 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 revolutionary intelligentsia with the revolutionary officers, they can lead the country. So by 1975, the uh, situation is becoming very hot in the Horn of Africa. On one side, the pan somalis understanding in Mogadishu, uh, which is also an ally of the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe. On the other side is the spontaneous revolution which continued and brought the downfall of the emperor and a new military officers taking over power in alliance with some civilians. Uh, uh, this situation, uh, while it's continuing, 
uh, uh, and uh, uh, the revolution in Ethiopia was also going from day to day uh, uh, deeper and uh, uh, deeper behind them, uh, which was not known at that moment. Uh, there was a secret organization was established by the imperialist forces with their alliances. Uh, Hassan al Haikal, the editor in chief of the Al Ahram journal on the time of Nasser, this man he was invited in 1980, in 1980 after the revolution in Iran, and the students in Iran, when they took over the American embassy in Tehran, they have captured a lot of documents from the American embassy. And uh, the Iranian revolutionary government invited Dr. Hassan al Haikal to come and to study these documents. And uh, uh, he came, he studied the document, he published in Arabic three volumes about that. And in English, one book was published, it's called The Sacred Channel. In his book, he mentions uh, that there was already from 1974 on, uh, there was a secret organization called, with a logo, uh, the Safari Club. The Safari Club is that it composes uh, uh, the intelligence of South Africa, uh, 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 one. Uh, second, uh, Mobutu Fuseko of Zahir, Shah of Iran and it is intelligent chief, um, King Fahd and it is uh, Turkey bin Faisal, the head of the intelligence of Saudi Arabia. Sadat, King of Morocco, French intelligence, British intelligence, William Colby of the CIA. Uh, uh, this they used to meet secretly in one of the cities and they discuss how to remove the danger of the Soviet Union and Cuba. Because already by that moment that the Cubans also had been involved in supporting the MPLA in, 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 uh, in Angola. Secondly, the alliance between MPLA and Paralemo in Mozambique, the independence of, the, of Mozambique by itself, threatened that it is, there is a danger of the Soviet and Cuban infiltration in African continent. And the project was designed and succeeded after the October war that Sadat had waged. Uh, Sadat is the president, uh, Mohammed Anwar Sadat, the president of Egypt, after the October war with Israel and so on. Then after that, he made peace. And finally, he removed the Soviet uh, experts who have supported him in his army, and he had shifted uh, his allegiance to the Western countries. So the, all this, Sadat also part of uh, the Safari Club. Uh, at that moment, they have given a name to Mobutu Tseko, the low part of Africa. The purpose is that Mobutu, he supports UNITA, anti mpla and to remove the danger of the Cuban, of the Soviets. And of course, the South African apartheid also regime is there. And those forces who have interest in the diamond industry, in the gold industry, they were frightened. And uh, this secret group, they used to organize themselves and they used to meet and they try to, to remove the danger of the Soviets. And this team also was working secretly. And the Soviets and the Cubans, by 1975, they started their own, what they call revolutionary diplom diplomacy between paternal revolutionary states and then President uh, 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 Castro visited Addis Ababa in 1975, then he went to Mogadishu, and finally both leadership of Somalia and, and, and Ethiopia, they were invited to have a meeting in southern Yemen in Aden. And of course there was a lot of discussion among them. For those who wanted to know about discussion, this document was released. In fact, it is when this uh, conference and meeting was made in, 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 in Aden, the Soviet Union was present, 
uh, DDR, the former uh, Democrat, German Democratic State, they were present, and whole Warsaw Pact, and President Castro also was present. The minutes which I got it later on after the East Germany collapsed and the Stasi, the East German intelligence service files became open. There is the minute was was discovered, and I have the minute for the people who wanted to read it. We can we can provide the discussion in Eden is very clearly explained. What was how to resolve this problem and the initiative the Cubans did. I'm not going to speak about that document at all. That we will make an, an independent or another uh, 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 time a program about it. That the young people in the Horn of Africa to understand what was happening in this meeting. Finally, in the meeting in Eden, they couldn't agree and they couldn't reach to agreement. And finally, they forced both of them to sign a common understanding between the two revolutionary states, Ethiopia and Somalia. And then that understanding is that they have to go back home, consult to their background, but they should not make any propaganda against each other. And then later on, after six weeks, they will meet again for further to continue the meetings and so on. That was agreed. And uh, both delegates left uh, Eden. The Somali delegation arrived in Mogadishu. And two days later is the Kissinger, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the United States, visited Somalia for one day. One has to understand also the situation between Ethiopia and, 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 and Somalia, the overall Cold War and as a, a, a situation between the West and the, and the East and the, uh, the East. Second is that the Safari Club role, which was playing, trying to what they call it, roll back, to roll back and to remove the Cuban and the Soviet danger in the African continent. That is an alliance between Europe and all these states and United States, that it is their sacred diplomacy. And for that, I think, is also Kissinger win. So it's in Somalia, you have two lines. Uh, and one side is that the line who says we are socialist country and there is a change in Ethiopia. We have to wait and see uh, uh, how the revolution will continue and will grow. There is no need now to discuss hot issues and we should support the revolutionary line. This is some civilians in the Socialist Party demanded that and they supported. And then within the party also there is the nationalist line who have taken, saying that it is, this is the opportunity now uh, uh, that the, the Somali people will have the right of self-determination, which is, means the Somali people in Ethiopia and so on. This is, was wrongly given to them by the colonial forces and so on. And as a result of that, uh, it is now they start supporting so-called liberation fronts, Western Somali liberation fronts, and so on. They were entering and they were fighting in that area. This group is getting stronger. When Kissinger came there, and finally, with the agreement of Aden, uh, was to come back after six weeks and not to make propaganda against each other, that was broken. And, uh, and the Soviet, they were chased away from Somalia and the war between Somalia and Ethiopia started and it continued. The Soviet and the Cubans also shifted to the Ethiopian side. Of course, the military regime, when it in, in Ethiopia made the change and, and, and the demise of uh, uh, the emperor, after a while, that uh, uh, there was an internal struggle among themselves. So in order uh, to understand uh, clearly what kind of struggle was under the military regime, there is a lot of uh, books written by uh, Ethiopians, even some of them are member of the there. But here in my hand is there is one book, it's uh, two years or three years ago was published, the downfall of an emperor uh, 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 and the Berg uh, uh, coming by Michel Gavranugus Haile, an Eritrean who had been member of the military council, elected from Eritrea, from the police, 
and he is mentioning that it is uh, at one time the Ethiopian ambassador who is stationed in Mogadishu, his name is Ayalo Mandepro. Ayalo Mandepro, he brought while it is in Ethiopia the crisis within the military within the within the Berg was continuing. He is the one who introduced them to organize the youth and the students, the university students and the secondary students to be sent and to do an alphabetization, help the peasantry and so on after uh, 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 and, and that is a carbon copy because he had seen it what happened in Somalia when the Somali government 1971 uh, announced that Latin is, is uh, the script will be and then after that the analphabet mobilization uh, to mobilize uh, uh, and, and to give uh, 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 the students to go to the rural areas and teach the peasant and the semi-peasant and the pastoralists their own script. So it is a carbon copy was taken from Mogadishu and it was implemented when I was a young man. It was implemented what they call in Ethiopia, uh, uh, in fact, it is a carbon copy from Somalia. Anyway, uh, once uh, the vision of Somalia and the nationalists took over within the Socialist Party and within the leadership, then the war between Somalia and Ethiopia happened and it continued until 1978. Once the Somali army was withdrawn from Ethiopia and, it, and, 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 and the Cubans interference, the Soviet uh, 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 interference in the region, interference in the sense supporting Ethiopia because they consider in Ethiopia the revolution is stronger, that Somalia had shifted to, to, to the line of nationalism. Somalia had been bought by the safari club in a, in a way that in the book of uh, Hassan al Haikal he mentioned that the most important role played in order to convince the Somali government is by the Shah of Iran. The Shah of Iran is the major player of the safari club and the title of the book of uh, 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 Dr. Hassan al Haikal, uh, anybody can, uh, can uh, order it uh, uh, and find it from the library, it's called the sacred channel. And there is a very big chapter about it. I really uh, advise people from the Horn of Africa also to read that. Uh, for those who know Arabic, there is three volumes. In Arabic, it's published. Uh, you could find it uh, in Cairo, uh, in most of the uh, uh, bookstore. It is a, a very good book in order to see how internally, secretly, these great powers organize the other and so and so on. And the Safari Club's role you could see there. Uh, the other major factor also what happened is that, that it is the election of President Reagan in the United States and, uh, uh, and, his, and his slogan, the evil empire, which means that it also accelerated the Cold War. And this evil empire with the concept of the rollback. We have to defeat this evil empire. A very aggressive Soviet, uh, aggressive American policy was designed. Uh, William Colby was the one who was leading uh, the CIA and uh, Mr. Reagan was there. And of course, it is uh, Brzezinski. He was saying that it is uh, the Soviet intervention or support to the revolutionary government in Afghanistan. We have to trap the beer or we have to send mosquitoes against the big beer, and then we have to defeat them. We have to give them their own Vietnam. And that also started 19, end of 1979 in Afghanistan. And this, I'm trying to connect all this, how the world situation was, and it is the Cold War, how it became very high. Somalia later on joined the, the, uh, the group of the Safari Club, Safari Club, uh, uh, or the Western countries. It signed also a pact, a military pact with the United States. So on one side, the Ethiopia became uh, uh, in the so uh, Soviet zone, you could say, or the socialist zone, and, and Somalia have entered also the Western zone. What is this implication after uh, 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 the war? 
1978 that it is Somali in Somalia. Officers have tried to make a coup. They didn't succeed, but they tried to overthrow. There was a problem in the, in the army, one side. Second, Somalia have also accepted the structural adjustment of World Bank uh, and so on. And this gradually also weakened the Somalia uh, and so on. Uh, the previous policies, which is helping the majority of the population based on, on, on collective thinking and so on, gradually is dwindling. And of course, a huge number of refugees from uh, 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 Ethiopia, particularly from Western Somali area, Somali speaking area, and so on, left and frightened by the situation uh, uh, in Ethiopia, and they came, and this brought also another openness for NGOs and this and this, and Somalia economically totally different country became, and it was, it fell also in the hand to certain extent of NGOs, World Bank, the structural adjustment, the violation of the Somali shilling, and this and this. And this hurted the masses in Somalia, and, and, and particularly the civil servants, the soldiers, and so on. The purchasing power of shilling. Shilling was before one dollar, it is for six and twenty cent shilling goods. Then it became 12, then 38, and the devaluation. And, and inflation increased in extreme situation. And gradually, opposition also, uh, as last time in Arabic, Dr. Zakaria explained, Somali opposition was also created in Rome, in London. Later on, all of them concentrated in, uh, had offices in Addis Ababa. Now, the war between these two countries, and after the Somali troops withdrawal and the, and, uh, the Soviets and the Cuban support, and then finally rebuilding uh, uh, the Ethiopian army. Ethiopia was now looking for the north to go according to the military regime and later on the socialist regime to finish the bandits in the north. It means bandit, according to them, is the Eritrean uh, revolutionary uh, movement. And he directed all his forces to the north. I was discussing at one time with a Cuban, the political officer of uh, uh, Cuban troops in Ethiopia under General Achawa. General Achawa was the one who was commanding the Cuban army in Ethiopia. Later on also he was commanding uh, the Cuban army in, in Angola. But finally, he was involved with the, in, uh, in corruption and drug things, and he was shot. But when he was a revolutionary, he was one of the famous uh, general of Cuba in the African continent. His major contribution was defending Ethiopia, leading 20,000 Cuban troops to Ethiopia, General Achawa. I was talking to his head, his political commissar, who is a Cuban, and he himself he wrote about the Ethiopian Revolution, a book. I met him here in Belgium before I met him in Cuba. He became a uh, director general of the party political school. And he, what he told me, uh, 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 he says that, in fact, we are the one who have initiated the meeting between President Siad Bare and Mengistu Haile Mariam to solve their problem in southern Yemen. We understand the historical contradiction and, uh, and so on and so on. And he said the minute exists in, 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 in uh, it was written uh, by the delegation of uh, JDR of the uh, East European countries. And he is the one who have sent me all the minutes and so on. I will not talk about that minute. We might, we might discuss that it is, it was an opportunity to solve the problems at that moment that it is, but how external forces always play, I just want to underline how external forces and uh, play in the region, we are also facing the same type of situation, that it is how they can create the antagonism so deeper and how they maneuver uh, 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 to uh, that young people uh, who wants to understand, who wants to make a, a research about it, we will provide uh, 
uh, all the documents. And the purpose of this discussion with me is that it is, is not to blame one or the other, it's just to, to see the history how it went and where is our position. How did, did we determine our fate? Did we see the world as we see it correctly? Who is behind? Are we, are we clever enough and well organized to understand the intrigue of other forces from outside? Uh, uh, just to give a glimpse about it. Maybe we will make one very big discussion in the future, what we will learn from the past and how we see now the present and, and, and then what we have to do in the future. Uh, finally, uh, the two states uh, uh, between Addis Ababa and Mogadishu, they became very antagonistic and the hate became very maximum. Uh, Mengisu, after his success, he put a condition. He put a condition, the only way we can have a relationship with Somalia on the basis of these five points, he says. One, Somalia has to denounce herself and accept the colonial border. To denounce herself, accept the colonial border as a border. Second, it has to pay a compensation of one billion dollars for the damage she caused in the war. And she uh, openly renounced claiming to take and uh, and stop any support for any rebellions inside Ethiopia. This is the condition. If Somalia fulfills that, and Somalia accepts that, and openly uh, 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 incriminate uh, herself, and openly uh, announces to the international community and to the African community that she has no any claim on Ethiopia, then our relationship will be smooth and we can have a good relationship. This is the position of the Ethiopian side at that moment. The Somali response was, was simple. They say, we had several wars, 1964, 1977. Our relationship has never been smooth. There was always uh, a competition between us, a, co a competition in a sense, uh, a competitive nationalism between us. We have a cause on you and so on, you claim that you, we don't have a cause. Now, we don't want to discuss the whole issues. Before all this, let's build a confidence-building diplomacy. That's the position of the Somalis. First, let's resume our diplomatic relationship. Let's stop a propaganda against each other. And then gradually, when situation changes, we can come and sit and discuss the whole issues. Both of them have totally two different policies, antagonistic, uh, is not acceptable. Until 1986. By 1986, situation also in Ethiopia is getting worse to the military regime. And 1986, I think Djibouti and some other external forces, I think they pushed for that and they created under the umbrella of Ibet, fighting famine and drought. That was the title of that meeting. By 1986, the two head of state, President Syed Barre of Somalia and President Mungisu Haile Mariam of Ethiopia, they met for the first time face to face. I mean, for the first time after the war. While they had uh, about eight, eight hours of discussion, nobody was presented. What they have discussed, nobody knows. There was no a minute was, a minute was left. But while the discussion was continuing, that the Eritrean commandos succeeded, entered into Asmara Airport and destroyed the Ethiopian Air Force, which is stationed in, in Asmara. And this too abruptly stopped uh, 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 the discussion and left home. Uh, after that, Mangisu Haile Mariam changed his position Changed when the Ethiopian government changes its position. The position is that instead Somalia have to renounce herself and so and so on. That was removed. And the concept what Somalia was promoting, let's build confidence diplomacy, that was accepted, while at the same time Mangistu was supporting the opposition. And of course the other side also was supporting the opposition against Mangistu. 
and finally Somalia and Ethiopia, they have resumed their diplomatic relationship while at the same time both supporting the Egyptian opposition in Somalia and also Somali opposition in Ethiopia. Finally, after that agreement, uh, uh, they resumed the diplomatic relationship. The Ethiopian embassy was opened in Addis Ababa, Somali, in Mogadishu. The Somali embassy was opened in Addis Ababa and so on. Mangistu also told it to the groups who were supporting, uh, like the SNN, later on also uh, USC of General Aidid and so on, sent them to enter into Somalia. And the SNM, in 1988, May, they have entered into Hargesa and Buru and they waged the war. A lot of disasters happened there and, uh, and the beginning of the end of uh, uh, the government of Kerbari. Then the USC have entered into the country. By 1990, President Kerbari uh, uh, have left the palace and Somalia have entered in a long journey of civil war which we have mentioned in the previous uh, uh, discussion we had, me and uh, comrade uh, Elias Amara, you can uh, visit uh, that. But it is, this is, is uh, uh, about Somalia from 1960 until 1990, and President Sayas, uh, President, uh, sorry, I'm repeating always President Sayas because President Sayas is alive, President Sayadvare, left the palace and situation uh, Somalia have entered into the long civil war, warlordism and so on until now since 2017 President Farmajo was elected and Somalia gradually is stabilizing and of course there are also other external forces who are not satisfied that Somali, Somalia is coming back and the, the, Soma, the Somali society is stabilizing, uh, 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 the business people, schools have, uh, have been open for a very long time, the uh, consciousness of the Somali people has increased, they want to have a peaceful transition and a, peace, and a government in the region, and the environment in the region totally has changed. And of course, the TPLF for the last well, seven years Balkanizing and, and being antagonistic to, to Somalia and waging war against Eritrea, trying to, to, to dominate Ethiopia while being a minority uh, and supported by external forces. That also the demise of the people left has brought a new situation, a new atmosphere in the Horn of Africa. And now we are starting a new chapter and that chapter called the new or North Africa, according uh, to me. Uh, I hope that the region will be gradually stabilized, that the relationship between the different peoples in the region, one in Ethiopia, that it is a new Ethiopia with a new basis uh, uh, and so on, is emerging, the still it is an embryo level. The sentiment of antagonism, I hope, will decrease and the sentiment, geography didn't change, the sentiment of oneness, brotherhoodness, how to work together, the world has changed. Uh, and our young people also, they need uh, a new vision, a new, a new relationship that it is, they didn't, it took for the last eight decades, the region had always been in turmoil and the uh, ruling class always been a minority. Uh, who is connected to the external forces, particularly in Ethiopia. But now we hope that uh, Ethiopia will turn into herself, accommodate most of the questions. It's possible to resolve the problem through discussion, build a regional alliance among the peoples and governments of the region, which I consider the new Horn of Africa as they have signed the first thing is that the peace between Ethiopia and Eritrea, then later on the tripartite uh, agreement between Somalia, Ethiopia, and, uh, and, and, and Eritrea. If this we can consolidate and gradually also educate, educate our young people that they have to switch from 
their patriotism must be a regional patriotism that the people of the region can work together. Our resources are so immense and we are not able to utilize it. We have spent a very long time in, in conflict and we have to switch now to peace building, to confidence building among the, all the people in Ethiopia and beyond Ethiopia with all the people of the Horn of Africa. That is my vision. Uh, uh, that is why we give this as an introduction. It happened. If they can organize secretly how to divide us, how to let us fight, and so on, why we don't organize openly that it is we don't want war, we have much thought in us, uh, let's everything come to the table. Uh, we can solve it slowly. There are issues we cannot solve it today, we can put it for tomorrow. Issues of today, we can solve it today. But the major thing is that it is the social economic integration of the people, that it is we can use our national resources to improve the life of our population. There are politicians who have always lived in competition. In competition in a sense that it is, I don't mind if they compete in a basis of program. I prefer this is my program. I will, I will, I will bring this kind of solution to the people. I will transform the life of, of, of the majority of the people and so on. So nothing compete in the market. I have no problem. But there are elements also who live also in competition, competition in a negative sense because uh, their attachment, their view is not their view. Somebody else wrote for them. Somebody else put it in their head. Somebody else from the back is pushing them to realize the project. When we, the people of Horn of Africa, the intelligentsia, the working people, the peasantry, the elderly, the religious people, and so on, we come to our sense. When we can sit, when they sit together and sort out of our, our contradiction, they organize as a group, whether you call it European Union, and so on, they organize as a group. And as, as a group, uh, they come and they impose their will on us. What is the relationship between a Greek and a Portuguese? Geographical relation. All of them, they are inside of European Union. And they sit, they cook together at the expense of us. Why we cannot sit together? Why we don't, uh, we don't think that it is, we even have more similarities than them. We have geographical similarities, religious similarities, cultural similarities. At the same time, we are very old people. We lived for a very long time in that area. Uh, 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 on the contrary, that, that it is, we are, they didn't invent us. And, and, and please, whoever listens to me, Think at least two minutes. What is the contradiction between us? It's nothing. The contradiction is always exists, and this contradiction basically the whole contradiction among the people, and we could have solved it if we could see. Of course, contradiction disappears if we die. Somebody who is dead have no contradiction because he doesn't speak, he doesn't move, he doesn't do anything and contradictions in the up there. But as long as we are alive, let us sort out our contradiction and minimize it and try to see our benefit. Our benefit is much, much, much bigger when we are united. Much bigger when we are united, we could mobilize more than 250 million people. Our resources is immense. Of course, there are forces who doesn't like these ideas. And they will, of course, they will not shower us because we were thinking this. We are not united or we want to have a unity to wage war against the other. We want to unite and to think together to change the life of the people of all of us. Therefore, please, my Ethiopian compatriot, my Somali compatriot, the Bhutians, uh, both Sudan, Kenyans, Eritreans, and, 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 and Ethiopians, please think for, uh, on, on this basis that it is, there is no geographical change. We want to build roads, 
highways between us, build railways among us. We have a very beautiful area. We have a beautiful culture. We look alike. There is no big difference among us. We have a lot of resources. Ethiopia is the water tower of Africa. Immense of water uh, uh, we have in the region. We have a good fertile land. We have a big livestock in the African continent. We have everything. We have gas, we have petrol, we have, name it. We have minerals and so and so. Therefore, please, let's think collectively. We can only overcome the difficulties we are facing now is only when we work collectively, when we think collectively. I wish that you will initiate a debate, a debate of the people of Horn of Africa, with the new Horn of Africa, and come into agreement. We should not have a pity contradiction, which is not necessary. And, 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 and uh, uh, we should forget that part. We should think in cooperating and working together and forge a new people in the Horn of Africa. And I wish you, all of you, that Try to make small committees in your family, in your neighborhood, uh, and so and so on, and try to think. Living in a good neighborhood, brotherly and paternal neighborhood, will only bring us to progress. Everybody have, we all of us who will die. I will die maybe earlier than the young people, and the young people will live longer than me. They have more evil responsibility to, to take the initiative, and we should fight narrow nationalism. Narrow nationalism is a third horse of the enemy, which is from outside subsidizing it and wants it to divide us. Narrowness for what? Everybody knows each other. We know we have a democracy where we live and so on and so on. Why we have to be narrow? We should not be narrow uh, to each other. Uh, uh, they have they have understood, they have used our contradiction, they put it into, into, into antagonistic contradiction. We should say, kafa, inner, badka, huh? we don't want anymore. We want to work together. And I wish you all Ethiopians, all Eritreans, all Sudanese, North and South, all Kenyans and all Somalis and all Djiboutians, to think twice. Let's come to the field. Let's work together. Give hand each other and think and imagine because the colonial forces, they put something in our field. It's not possible that we can cooperate with the us. You are primitive. You are not able. Your culture is more aggressive rather than to sit and discuss. It's not true. They inject the virus on us. They inject the virus in our young people. Please sit and think. Let's come together. Look our media. The media. Look, in order to create contradiction, we see the campaign now which is going on against Ethiopia and Dr. Abi in Tigray. Hmm? When their agent died and collapsed with them because of it is our mistake. Huh? They are from Amnesty International to all so-called this NGO. We should, we should in fact mobilize all of us together, the people of Horn of Africa, bring the most intelligent lawyers of us and so on, accuse and bring the Amnesty International to court for a lie, for such kind of uh, lie. We should accuse them. We should bring them to court for lying, for creating, inciting conflict among the people. If you do that in the United States, they will take you to prison. If you do that in Europe, they, they will take you to prison. Huh? But they, they have the right to do it on us because it is, as long as we are not organized, they think that it is they can succeed. But if we are organized, if we are like one man and one woman, we will succeed. I wish you all uh, uh, the hope and health and everything. Please think, come to the Horn of Africa television. We can discuss and so on. The people of Tigray, they are our brothers and sisters. They are not our enemies and they will never be our enemies. Those enemies who wanted to create the antagonism, the virus, the disease, the bacteria, they were sending to us, we should combat them together. 
and I wish you all the best and thank you very much. Let's uh, next week we'll meet in the same day, Monday, uh, with a new chapter. And if you have any comments, please you can write as long and your recommendation is acceptable. Thank you very much. I wish you all the best. Bye.